वेलकम टू ए टी सी एम द एमरजेंसी मेडिसिन चैनल टूडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट ए केस ऑफ वैल्युलर हार्ट डिसीज वी कैन कैन वी स्टार्ट द केस नाउ श्योर सर ए सिक्सटी फाइव इयर ओल्ड फीमेल पेशेंट फ्रॉम त्रिशूर हुज एन हाउस वाइफ प्रेजेंटेड विद कंप्लेन्स ऑफ चेस्ट पेन एंड ब्रीथिंग डिफिकल्टी फॉर द पास्ट टू मंथ्स हिस्ट्री ऑफ प्रेजेंटिंग इलनेस सिक्सटी फाइव ओल्ड फीमेल पेशेंट प्रेजेंटिंग विद कंप्लेन ऑफ चेस्ट पेन एंड ब्रीथिंग डिफिकल्टी फॉर द पास्ट टू मंथ्स chest pain was chronic in onset and progressive in nature pain was characterized as heaviness in the chest which was uh, not radiating to the arm with no aggravating or relieving factors also associated with breathlessness which was chronic in onset and progressive in nature what are the cardiac causes for uh, chest pain cardiac causes um, mainly ischemic heart disease ischemic heart disease coronary artery disease is the major cause any other causes can produce chest pain valvular heart disease valvular heart disease like uh, mitral regurgitation more than mitral reg- mitral regurgitation any ca- valvular heart disease can produce yes. but aortic Atos. stenosis subaortic stenosis all these things can produce fixed output state that can produce uh, coronary spasm and produce uh, chest pain okay. and uh, other conditions like mitral stenosis any valvular heart disease can produce chest pain pericarditis also can produce chest pain but that is not related to excess it's a continuous pain okay. this um does uh, as an heaviness in the chest not radiating to the arm also associated with breathlessness which is chronic in onset progressive in nature uh, patient complained of breathlessness which was initially present during daily routine activities which gets relieved at rest nyha class 3 and it, it has progressed to breathlessness even at rest that, that is nyha class 4 it has progressed to nyha 3 to 4 in a span of 2 months it was associated with orthopnea and pnd and uh, also associated with uh, three episodes of syncope in past two months which was predominantly exertional orthopnea and pnd mainly related to a uh, type of breathlessness where you get in fluid overload okay. okay it can be due to left ventricular failure that leads to fluid overload so that is a problem orthopnea pnd means it always indicates a condition where left ventricle is failed that we should understand okay and uh, it was not associated with fever cough palpitation headache weakness or seizures now coming to past history uh, the patient has been uh, diabetic for the past 20 years and uh, no other relevant uh, past history and uh, family history mother was also diabetic personal history uh, the patient has normal sleep and appetite normal bowel and bladder habits and coming to general examination patient is conscious uh, oriented to time place and person no pallor no ictus sinuses clubbing or lymphadenopathy and coming to vitals the bp was 90 by 60 uh, taken in a sitting position using an adult cuff size very low systolic bp indicates what uh, it's a systolic decapitation uh, usually seen in valvular disease like uh, okay valvular heart disease it is a feature of aortic stenosis mm. but patient who is having left left ventricular failure failure also can have same finding so valvular heart disease aortic stenosis left ventricular failure many patients female patients will have a normal bp like this 90 by 60 sometimes there may not be any lesion but if you are thinking about a valvular heart disease systolic decapitation is the classical finding in seen in aortic stenosis subaortic stenosis all these things now coming to respiratory rate it was 25 per minute thoraco abdominal and saturation is 92% in room air temperature is febrile okay Now coming to uh, cardiovascular system examination on inspection there is no dilated veins or scars uh, precordial bulge is absent and the apex beat was visible and J- jvp was elevated okay and on palpation uh, the, there was an heaving apical impulse which is felt at the fifth intercostal space lateral to the mid clavicular line and a carotid thrill was also present okay so you have a patient who is having palpitation chest pain and uh, uh, breathlessness who is having heaving apical impulse what do you mean by heaving apical impulse heaving apical impulse means heaving apical impulse means it lifts your hand like this and mm-hmm. sustain for some time this is classically seen in left ventricular hypertrophy mm-hmm. it can be seen in hypertensive heart disease it can be seen in uh, aortic mm-hmm. stenosis it can be seen in hcm so many conditions you can get a heaving mm-hmm. type of apical impulse that indicates an hypertrophy of the left ventricle mm-hmm. then uh, parastyle heave was not felt yeah. there was a raised uh, jvp of 10 cm raised jvp indicates a failure failure, failure feature 
okay it can be due to a back pressure from the left ventricle to rv and produces rv failure okay. that is also possible awesome. and um, there was a thrill present in the aortic area okay a thrill indicates what a valvular uh, definitive valvular, valvular disease. disease you know that sometimes innocent murmurs can be there anemia can produce some hyperdynamic circulation can produce murmurs in some area but if you are getting a thrill means there is a definitive valvular heart disease, disease. so on percussion all the cardiac borders were so again systolic thrill or diastolic thrill Uh, this aortic area you are getting a thrill that is very important if it is systolic thrill you have to suspect a aortic stenosis mm. if you are getting a diastolic thrill it is aortic regurgitation mm. um so the all cardiac borders were percussed and was found to be normal on auscultation uh, s1 was heard it was normal s2 was soft and the fourth heart sound was heard okay and s1 is normal that means mitral and tricuspid valves are almost normal okay S2 is soft means there is some problem in the aortic, aortic area, area or pulmonary, pulmonary area. area. Okay, so we are getting a thrill in the aortic area. We are getting soft S2. Okay, so that is very important. Okay. Then I also heard a murmur, which is ejection systolic murmur, with a late peaking in the aortic area, radiating to the carotids. It was best heard in sitting and leaning forward uh, position with breath held in expiration. So that is very important. You are getting a you are getting a low volume pulse. you are getting a systolic decapitation you are getting a thrill in the aortic area that is systolic now you are getting an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area okay mm. it all indicates there is a aortic problem probably there is a aortic valve stenosis yes. and it is radiating to the carotid also are you getting any carotid thrill yes a carotid thrill thrill is there yes. so if there is a thrill then you have to suspect another lesion there there may be a carotid stenosis also so somebody can have aortic stenosis same person can have a carotid stenosis so thrill is very very important thrill definitely tell you that there is a problem okay. um then uh, on a respiratory system examination uh, there there was a bilateral basal crepes okay that may be indicating a pulmonary edema or is age uh, is related. okay age can this age they can have normal crepitations then on uh, gi uh, examination uh, there was nothing uh, significant and cns examination was also There was What is the diagnosis in this case, sir? It could be uh, moderate to severe um, aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis. What are the uh, points in favor of a aortic stenosis? Starting from the pulse. Starting from the symptom, he is having chest pain, <laughs> breathlessness. Chest pain and breathlessness is one of the classical findings in aortic stenosis. What is happening to the pulse here? It could uh, slow rising. It is a slow rising, low volume pulse. Mm-hmm. BP. BP is uh, systolic, systolic decapitation. decapitation. Apical impulse. It is heaving. Heaving and not shifted down and out. No. It is only slightly shifted out. Okay, mm. that shows a hypertrophic heart disease. Heart disease. That may be due to a fixed outlet obstruction or HOCM. We don't know what is what was at that time. Okay. Then what happened to the uh, first heart sound, second heart sound? First heart sound is normal. normal. Second heart sound is soft. Soft. That means there is a problem in the aortic valve. What is the type of murmur you are getting? Ejection systolic. Murmur. There is an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic okay. area, which is ca- going to the carotid. Carotid also. You are getting a thrill there also. Thrill. Okay, so there may be aortic stenosis associated with this patient. Also have a carotid artery stenosis. What are the differential diagnoses for an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area? Uh, first, I would think of aortic stenosis, then uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or aortic sclerosis. Okay. So hypertension. hypertension most important differential diagnosis for aortic stenosis is aortic sclerosis sclerosis aortic sclerosis is a benign condition aortic stenosis is valvular heart disease right. how do you differentiate this two both you will have ejection systolic murmur starting from the pulse what is the difference for aortic sclerosis what happens to the pulse in aortic sclerosis uh, it won't be in the uh, slow rising pulse okay. won't be it there it is normal, normal or pulse. higher volume pulse because of the thickness of the blood vessel mm-hmm. what happened to the bp bp systolic decapitation normal would not bp be or some patients will have a higher, higher bp, BP. then then uh, what happened to the second heart sound it will be normal normal won't be so ejection systolic murmur may be there it can even even radiate to uh, carotid right. so you have a patient who is having aortic stenosis admitted with progressive breathlessness stenotic features uh, pulmonary edema like features what is the investigations of choice in this patient 
Uh, first as a routine I would go for ECG. ECG is very important. You get an LVH pattern in this patient. Then? Then I would go for an uh, echo cardiogram. Echo is very important. You want to know what is the size of the ventricle, whether there is a, a hypertrophic change, what happened to the valve, all these things we can make out. What is the immediate treatment for this patient in emergency room? We will maintain the airway, airway and breathing and circulation. Because the saturation is slightly low, mm -hmm. we may have permanent edema. So you start him on oxygen, propped up position, if required BiPAP, all these things should be started. What is the definitive treatment for aortic stenosis? Uh, valvular replacement. Valvular replacement is done only when there is a re uh, regurgitation. Re stenosis means you can just dilate the valve, that mm -hmm. is a treatment, not replacement. Replacement is always done when there is a calcification, destroyed valve or there is a aortic regurgitation. Here there is no aortic regurgitation. Hmm. What are the reasons for aortic stenosis in this patient? The old age patient? Sclerosis. It can be sclerosis going for a stenosis, stenosis. or a bicuspid aortic valve which was there Congenite. in the past and now it is becoming more severe. It cannot be due to rheumatic heart disease because it, uh, there is no history. Hmm. So here more in favor of a old age change like sclerosis going for stenosis or a bicuspid valve going for aortic stenosis. Okay. Okay, thank you.